morning and greetings from Costa Rica. As we say here, pura vida, pure life, pure life. I want to speak with you today and share with you some of my experiences um, around the issues, the conflicts that come up between us as people, as family, as friends, and as medicine community as well those walking a healing path. They say there is no uh, detour from the path and conflicts are certainly part of our path and how to meet them in a way that's safe and a way that brings healing when possible. So as you listen, I welcome you to receive what resonates with you. I come in a spirit of sharing, and some of this may not be relevant. There is a teacher, um, Ajahn Shah of Jack Cornfield from the Thai monastery monks, and he would say one thing to one person and say the opposite thing to somebody else. And he was questioned why you told this person to focus on themselves, you told the other person not to focus on themselves. This is a contradiction, it doesn't make sense. And he said, uh, people are walking their path and sometimes they're a little to the left. And so I tell them to go a little to the right. Sometimes they're a little to the right and I tell them to go a little to the left. And so in the Buddhist traditions, they speak about skillful means, not a right and wrong, but to act skillfully. And so in this way, I share as a spiritual mentor for those I'm mentoring and, and trying to tap in and to see where they are and what's helpful. And in a more open sharing like this, some of this might be helpful. Some of this might be, oh, I'm already very much in this direction. And so if something is confusing or doesn't resonate, it's okay, let it, that can pass. And, uh, and maybe something else is a little more helpful. As you listen, I welcome you too to either watch this video uh, or put it on headphones. I like to listen to things while I'm eating, while I'm cooking, while I'm cleaning. And uh, it can be a really nice way to receive and sort of rest too. Okay, so talking about conflicts. Whew, a lot of times we don't like conflict. We get angry at conflict. I was in a ceremony recently uh, with my teacher, Don Gino, and a conflict came up energetically with somebody. And the guidance came to me, wow, this person is literally bringing their hurt to you. And maybe they want you to feel their hurt. They want you to receive their hurt. Okay, not so helpful for me <laughs> to receive your hurt. But isn't this how it is? But as they bring their hurt to you, it, it's also maybe they're bringing it because there's a reflection, there's a mirroring, you resonate with that same hurt, maybe in a different way. Maybe there's a level of trust too. They bring their hurt to you. Maybe they love you. Maybe they feel safe with you. Maybe they respect you. And so as they bring their hurt to you, just like when we um, feel our hurt, when we feel our anger, our sadness, or in yoga, when we feel tension in a part of our body as we bend or twist, that's a place, that's an opportunity, that tension in the body. Here is an opportunity to release, to open. The anger that comes in meditation or in life, again, an opportunity, it's come, it's here. And so when somebody brings a conflict or you experience a conflict more like it with somebody, it's an opportunity. Something is here that can be healed. A lot of times when somebody brings a conflict to us, it can already be at the point where it's overwhelming. This is a really tough place to be. Somebody said to me once, what do you do when things 
are in crisis, when things, when somebody is physically trying to hurt you or, or things have reached that crisis point? That's a good question. That's a good question. What occurred to me in that moment was the best time to treat something is before it gets overwhelming. And there's some different ways to do it, to try to be aware, using awareness, to see the conflict as it's coming. A lot of times, oh, it's not such a big conflict, I'll ignore it. It's okay, I'll ignore it. It's easier when it's not so big, when there's trust. When there's no longer trust, because the conflict has grown very large, at this point, you may not, it may not be a, um, such an easy time to work it out with that person. This might be a time more to bring in some of your good qualities like respect. So I'm going to start by speaking a little bit about respect. When somebody brings something to us, let's say it's a judgment. Let's say it's a, you're bad, or you're sick, or you're harmful. We can say that this is one of their demons, this judging. We can say that it's one of their protectors. But either way, it is a way for them to, what, protect themselves. It's a strategy, it's a method, it's a tool that they're using. Why are they doing that? What does that serve for them? If that harmful way that they have is the best way that they know to protect themselves, they may not be capable of a more loving way to protect themselves. And it serves them in a, in a lot of ways. It creates karma, it creates more conflict, but also perhaps it allows them, look, when I, when I judge somebody, I, I don't take in so much from them. I put up a wall. Perhaps I diminish them in my eyes. They take up less mental real estate. They can take up more if we get really attached, but it can take up less. Ah, oh, this person, they're that. Okay. It's not so loving. It's not so respectful. But we can respect that strategy that they're using to protect themselves, create inner space for themselves. And maybe then that's part of their process. So when somebody comes at us with an attack, or a wall, or a coldness, or they avoid us, and these things can feel very hurtful, we can feel betrayed, we can feel what about the love or the friendship, the relationship that feels damaged by this. We can also respect where they are and what they're capable of doing, and respect that their process we don't know their process. So hard to see somebody's full process. That might be a really important step for them to take. Does not change the fact that it can be hurtful and harmful to us. So we focus on ourselves in that case. When there's not the trust, when things have gotten to an overwhelming place, we focus on ourselves. What does that mean? One of my, my original teacher for medicine, Maria, she would counsel me to breathe. So if I'm at the purge, the purge hole and other people are purging and they're yelling or someone comes over and to disturb, I breathe, I stay with myself. What's my process? What's my truth? So much energy, so much life within us. And joy, too. And joy is such a healing force. So we connect to ourself. Sometimes we try to go out and meet the thing that's harmful to us, and that might be the best that we have. Meet it with a wall. Meet it with an attack, a judgment. Meet it in some kind of way. By focusing on ourself, we can give ourselves what we need. Instead of parrying, we're healing. Perhaps, too, through the breath, we can lift ourselves up to a vibration that doesn't resonate on that conflict. We focus on ourselves. We give ourselves resource. We give ourselves joy. Perhaps laughter. <laughs> laughter is wonderful. 
Laughter helps diminish harshness. And if harshness is coming to us, it can be a, a, a compassionate laughter can come. Ah, we're all really trying, aren't we? We are really trying, trying to heal, trying to protect, trying to make the world a better place, trying to get rid of what we see as wrong. Wow. Okay, and we do it in ways that hurt each other. Oh, I do that too. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So laughter can be good. Joy can be good. And, and connecting to what's called uh, the qualities of awakening or the divine qualities or in Buddhism, the paramitas, the perfections. Um, connecting to things like gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe not thank you to them in this moment. That may not be available. Thank you to the good things in my life. Celebrations. I celebrate good things in my life. Other paramitas, joy for others. Who are the people in your life you feel really good for? Perhaps this person, there's a, some kind of healing, some kind of growing that's coming. Oof. I can, I can see it with hope, with joy. Joy for them, hope for them. I can mm, I tap into that. Wow, they're protecting themselves. Maybe there was a time before when they didn't protect themselves. Now this is the best protection that they know, and they're doing it. One of the qualities of hope is we fight. Or we heal. But a hopeful person will, will put that effort forward. They must have hope. Very good. Very good. So we come to ourselves, we give ourselves resource through the breath, through meditation, through practices, through gratitude, through joy. And then we try to bring to ourselves healing. We're connecting somehow. This is a mutual thing that's happening, our conflict. What is it in us? And here an easy way is to leave them aside for the moment and really feel, what is it for me? Oh, people diminish me. They don't appreciate me. And then I'm disempowered because they don't see or they don't appreciate the good things that I've contributed and I continue to contribute. Okay, that's, that's something I've experienced. All right, now it's, now it's something I can work with. Hmm. So what is this for me? What is my healing for this, for not being appreciated? And I tap into this. What is it for you? Okay, for me sometimes it's, I'm clinging. I see it. I see they don't appreciate, but I keep giving in the same place where it's not appreciated. Maybe sometimes it's the right thing to do for me. And also maybe it's not so aligned for me. Maybe it's better for me to plant my seeds in a place where they're nurtured. For me, for my seeds too, for my work, for my work on this earth, for my gifts, for this, this precious, precious love, the precious things that we each carry. Ah, I'm not appreciated here, I'm not appreciated there. Okay, where am I appreciated? Where's the light? Let me plant my seeds in those places. And if I don't know yet, let me feel that. I want that place. I miss that place. Maybe it's hard to feel. Oh, I want a place I feel at home. That missing is beautiful. We can be angry. Oh, it's not here. It's not here. This person, if they changed, it would be here. Maybe there's something that you could do. Maybe a little bit. But then also we can feel that sort of sadness, that yearning. And stick with it. It's tough. That yearning. That yearning that will guide us, that will connect to what we're yearning for. When we love somebody and they're not in our lives in a period, we miss them. Love continues, missing. So let that love continue. If you're missing something and you don't see it, maybe it's not here to change. Maybe it's just to feel that. And I really want something. Hmm. Mm, and I, 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 well, I, I see it for myself. I want it for myself. I want it for others too. 
So it can be very beautiful to tap into that longing of what you're longing for. So many places this can go as you explore within what's here for you and such. And now you're on your path in a way that's mm, truer for your path. What somebody else need, might need might not be for you to give. It can be confusing. Sometimes it's for you to give. It's on your path. But as you tap onto, into your path, it can guide you. Maybe you do need to fight. Maybe you need to defend yourself in some ways. You need to stand up for yourself. And maybe at first it starts with anger coming out and wanting to hurt somebody. That's how it is. So it starts there. Maybe you need to feel that, see that, okay. Maybe even learn some lessons. Ah, I do this, it doesn't, works a little, doesn't, also hurts myself. One of the um, times I sat with medicine, the medicine showed me, it, it showed me something coming to bite me, eat, eat me. Uh, and I said, oh, no, I'm going to push this away. I don't want to get eaten. I said, no, 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 I'm the medicine. Trust me. Okay. It took a bite out of me. I, I trusted. And then it started to throw up. It started to purge. I said, oh, good. Okay. So what was it inside me? Maybe it was poison. Maybe it was anger. <sighs> Stay away from me. <laughs> Maybe it was judgment. Oh, don't come near me. Oh, I can judge you. I can hurt you. Maybe it was these things I thought. And then I thought, so do I fill myself with poison? When we feel anger, when we feel judgment, <sighs> tension towards others. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Where do we feel it? Do we feel it in them? Where do you feel it when you feel tension? Where in your spirit, your energy, your emotions, where in your body do you carry it? So one thing I've learned is to tuck my knees and grab onto my knees and feel love towards this body. Where is the tension? This body deserves to be healthy, to be free, to be soft, to be joyful, not to be full of this poison, this tightness. So I bring healing to myself through perhaps forgiveness. I forgive myself for my anger. Or I forgive myself for wanting to hurt others. And I, in this way I can release. So when we have poisons within ourselves, that's a strategy. Animals carry poison within themselves. It can be a very effective strategy. I, I'm not here to, to say what's right or wrong for any individual. It might be exactly what's needed. But there's other ways to, to live in this world in a good way. A lot of times we talk about trying to release the poisons, trying to release the hurt, trying to release the judgments. Okay, in this case, we're trying to release our protections, our skills, our strategies. There might be a lot of resistance inside. If I release this, what am I going to do? How do I protect myself? What if people come to bite me? They're not afraid of me. Maybe that was my protection. Make them afraid. How can I release that? So to just release can be part of a process, but often it can be confusing because we're telling ourselves not to use our protections, perhaps. A lot of times the way we release a certain energy is by finding something else. We find a new strategy, a new way to protect ourselves. We find new resources. So it's okay. It's okay to listen to our anger, listen to our judgments, see them. What are they, what are they doing? What are they saying? Can I meet this in a different way? When the Buddha was teaching and sharing his teachings uh, with these monks that were coming, he would tell them, sharing what he knew, go into the forest, sit in the forest, meditate, do these things. They say, okay, they go, they come back, Buddha 
Oh, I went. I went and, and do you know what happened? Mara came. And the demons came. The, the devil came. Oh my gosh, it was scary. Or I heard a tiger. I was out in the forest. Energy, energy this and that. There was a tiger there, man. You, you told me go into the forest. Teach me a way to protect myself. And the Buddha taught them meta meditation. So what is meta meditation? You might know it already. Meta meditation is wishing well towards others. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free. Wishing well towards ourselves. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be free. So he taught them how to wish well, how to cultivate, how to cultivate this energy of of, of joy, of wellness, of peace, and sent them back into the forest. Here we are in the forest, my friends. So one way that's not poison, that's not tightness, that's not hurt, hurt in our body, that can be part of disease, stress, all these things, is along those lines of cultivating the divine qualities, the paramitas, the qualities of awakening. And freedom, liberation, joy, love, compassion. We cultivate these qualities. And what happens when harshness comes? <laughs> Maybe like a good nature to freedom, a, a liberation, a, a laughter, a, ooh, this life, huh? Yes, this life, wow. We meet it in this way, where it meets these good qualities of ourselves. And it softens. Perhaps we've been cultivating peace. How do we cultivate peace? How do you cultivate peace? Maybe it's by being peaceful, by playing guitar, by playing backgammon, watching a movie, being kind to yourself, to others, spending time with your family, nice people, animals, nature. Okay, so... Before this, I was doing some work as a pedicab, a bicycle taxi, a little story. And sometimes I was on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. People come with a lot of anger, you know? We say craziness, but what are they battling with? They come, ah, oh, maybe they're disrespecting, hitting people, smacking people. And they come with this anger. As they come with that energy... There's people and there's the energies that they carry. The person is the person. The energy they carry, they're taken with. They're, they're not in control of. They're not. It's taken them. It's taken them. It's with them. They're bringing it to you in energy. An energy of anger, hatred. You deserve to be hurt. You deserve to be disrespected. Where did they hear that? Oh. Compassion. Oh. What is compassion? When, when we bring compassion in our life, when you brought compassion to others, what's been the effect? Perhaps peace. This person brings aggression towards me, let's say, or towards you. Your energy is peace. That aggression comes. How much have you cultivated your peace? How tapped into that peace, that aggression comes? The peace can be stronger. And what happens to anger when peace comes? Oh, it softens. Protection. Protection. And then there's healing. So how does healing come? Again, I was with, uh, with the medicine and the medicine came and took this bite of me and it threw up. How does healing come? I thought, ah, poison's not the only thing that makes people throw up. What else? <laughs> Ayahuasca, medicines. And it makes it throw up through healing, not through hurting. So as I become medicine, as I cultivate, these are why practices are so good, right? Before the conflict, cultivating, cultivating. If I see a lot of conflict coming, I can, oh, there's all this conflict coming. That may not help. 
What's something else I can do? Ooh, I better really cultivate my joy. Better really cultivate my peace, my humor, my love. Get ready. Get ready, everybody. The more conflict you see, wow, in the world right now. Get ready. How did, how, what's the medicine? Cultivate it. Be medicine. Somebody comes to you, they take a bite out of you, they come at you, they come into your energy too. If your energy is well and cultivated, it can be healing, compassion, love. These things are so healing. Acceptance. Ah, you're bringing your hurt to me. I don't like that. I don't like it, but I see it's what's happening. Okay. Acceptance, important first part. What else? Where is it coming from? Awareness. Let yourself be aware. You don't need something to have mental real estate. That's thoughts, 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 thinking, rumination. But you don't need to close your eyes when something's coming towards you. Awareness, see it. See it and know it. Ah, oh, what is it? Ooh, something, somebody did this to them. And what did they do to them? What is it? Ah, oh, it's a, uh, you're not important. Okay, now they're coming at me with that. You're not important. Okay. I breathe, I cultivate, I, I bring my joy, I bring my, I treat myself with care. Treat myself with care. That's what came up to me now. Care. Care for myself. So as I find that medicine in me, maybe, <clears throat> listening to our heart, listening to yourself, maybe I can share this. Ah, I care. I wish you healing. I really want you treated well. I really want you to have peace, to have strength, to be able to protect yourself. I want you to, to feel that care towards yourself. And I feel that care towards you. More important even. Straight care. Care. You're important. You are important. And with it might come a, a certain amount of love and perhaps energetically you share this. It can, can happen very naturally. And they can receive some healing. They brought some hurt to you and they received healing. In the best case scenario, that's not always possible. Okay, so here are some different ways of sort of self-defense and healing and ways of treating ourselves well and navigating in this world.